It's the last business day for the week. Welcome to Business Incorporated, coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago on the program today. IMF says Sub-Saharan Africa needs commodity price surge to avert debt crunch. Zimbabwe's new government commits to reforms in post-Mugabe era. Plus, stern of Africa unit to repay $1.2 billion loan to troubled parents. Start off this program with the markets and here on the African continent are the Nigerian stock market and of course the JSC index. Those markets remained in the red at entry day. The NSC index was down 0.11% while the Johannesburg Stock Exchange was down 0.84%. The Nairobi stock market was also down on Thursday. Uh, Egypt is closed for the weekend today. In the Middle East, the stock markets there were mixed on Thursday as the market remains closed today, with the Saudi Arabian boss taking little encouragement from the government's announcement of a 72 billion real stimulus package. King Salman issued a royal decree approving measures to stimulate growth in the private sector. They include residential loans worth 21.3 billion reals, a 10 billion real fund to support economic projects, and 1.5 billion reals to support distressed companies. The Saudi stock index fell 0.26%, with utility Saudi Electricity, which had plunged to 9.9% on Wednesday, sinking a further 5.1%. The Dubai index dropped 1.43% as Emma Properties, which had dropped 6.2% on Wednesday on news of a smaller than expected special dividend for shareholders, lost a further 3.7%. Fellow developer Damak Properties slid 3.5% in sympathy. In Abu Dhabi, Adnok distribution edged down 0.4% to 2.64 dirhams. It traded for the first time on Wednesday after an initial public offer at 2.50 dirhams per share. The Abu Dhabi index slipped 1.03%. However, Qatar's index edged up 0.06% as real estate firm Edston Holding, the most heavily traded stock, climbed 1.8% after jumping 6.4% on Wednesday. And to Europe now, stocks moved lower on Friday morning with sentiment curbed by concerns over plans to overhaul the tax system in the U.S. There are also lots of corporate news in today and that's what Daniel will be talking to us about. Good afternoon, Daniel. Thank God it's Friday, as always. Oh my God, we we'll seem to have lost Daniel there, but we'll hope to get through to him as soon as possible. Well, we'll move over now to the Wall Street, where the U.S. stock index futures are set for a positive open as investors shake off concerns surrounding overhauling the tax system and turn their attention to upcoming data. The concerns surrounding the state of the U.S. tax plan added pressure to markets overseas, with Asia closing lower and Europe uh, dipping into the red. Switching focus to Friday's session, a number of economic releases are due at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The Empire State Manufacturing Survey is expected to come out, followed by industrial production data due out at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Treasury International Capital data will be released in the afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Meantime, Friday also marks quadruple witching day, where volatility is likely as stock index futures, stock index options, stock options and single stock futures expire. No major earnings are set to be released on the final trading day of the week. I understand Daniel is back to us. Daniel, we have quite a lot to chew on uh, some of the corporate news coming in today. And um, I had said, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, here I am. Uh, I don't know, we had a little problem with the connection, <laughs> but now I'm here. Uh, thank God it's Friday. I hope you had some nice celebration yesterday after uh, this announcement that your TV channel is again number one in Nigeria. Everybody here is really looking forward to the weekend. You're right. The celebration is continuing today and, of course, for the rest of the year. Let's get down to business. Ever CEO Tom Enders is stepping down when his term ends in 2019. Now, is this all about management reshuffling only or there is a bigger game plan in Airbus cockpit. 
Yeah, this actually kind of uh, came as a surprise uh, this morning when we heard the news that the CEO of Airbus uh, was announcing that he is going to step down. Uh, actually, not right away. It's going to be happening in 2019. And then we are also hearing that the number two in Airbus, Fabrice Breger, will be also leaving the company that's already going to take place next year. In general, Airbus is a company, a very healthy company, a good business, even getting closer to their rival uh, Boeing. Uh, we remember that uh, just this week it was announced that uh, Airbus is most likely going to get a mega deal coming from the United States. Delta Airlines, one of the biggest carriers in the United States, is very much interested to buy more than 100 planes from Airbus. A321, that's kind of a mid-range uh, airplane, uh, and this would be uh, a job of more than 12 billion euros. Also, we have to take into consideration that normally uh, when a company buys that many uh, airplanes, they usually get a big discount. So it's not about the business. The business Airbus uh, can pretty much be happy with. It's more that Airbus was really having in the past uh, problems regarding a money laundering a scandal. That's actually already some years ago. But this deal and this uh, kind of dispute never really left the company and mostly kept also the CEO busy. Also, that's what we are kind of learning. Most likely the CEO was a little bit under pressure by the authorities that were investigating this money laundering a scandal, kind of urging the company uh, to have a new uh, head of the company really to get uh, these things really out of uh, the way. It's going to be really interesting what's now going going to happen uh, with a company with two major, two main people of the company uh, leaving pretty much uh, the cockpit. Uh, the biggest question also for Airbus, what is going to happen with the Airbus 380, this double-decker Airbus that Airbus has been a little bit struggling with in the past. Uh, pretty much the only big airline still interested in this Airbus 380 is Emirates, but also uh, during the last air show in Dubai, they cancelled at a very last minute one very big job that they wanted to give Airbus. Airbus announced this week that most likely they will uh, reduce dramatically the production of the Airbus 380 to just uh, six or seven planes per year. Remember at the beginning when the Airbus 380 was introduced, Airbus was producing around 30 planes of the Airbus 380 per year.